The Itatools built-in module is easy to use, as I'll show you. As its name suggests, it provides a number of functions that are both memory efficient and which take much of the heavy lifting out of creating effective iterators. They can be used individually, or they can be chained together to implement complex algorithms. Let's start with chain. Let's say you have two different working groups. We'll call them A and B. You'll already know how to make a single list out of them by adding them together. Here we're looping over the newly combined list and printing each item in turn. Take a real world example where A contains the active users and B contains the inactive users. Well, you can chain them together and you'll get the same result. Furthermore, it's far more memory efficient to do it this way because, in the previous example, you're creating a brand new list as an intermediate. You can imagine that if A and B are very large, then it's a real drain to make a brand new list as opposed to just using chain. And that's our first win. Chain contains an alternate constructor that allows you to pass in a single iterable. To see what it does, let's change A so it's now a list containing two tuples. Each tuple has four items within it. If we were to call chain on A, then we just get those two tuples back. Chain from iterable on the other hand, then iterates over each of those in turn. So we get each item from the first tuple and then each item from the second tuple after it, having the same effect as this nested for structure, but computed lazily. I'm quickly covering zip here, despite the fact that it's actually a built-in function as opposed to being part of the itatools module. It takes an arbitrary number of iterables and then returns an iterator of tuples. It's commonly used whenever you want to pair data together. Here we have a tuple, x, y, z, and 1, 2, 3. The first tuples that zip will return will be whatever is at index naught in A followed by index naught of B. The second tuple returned will have index 1 of A followed by index 1 of B, and so on. You can pass in a third sequence to zip, or even more, but that's less common. What happens if A and B are mismatched with respect to the number of items they contain? Well, zip stops when the shortest input iterable is exhausted, but the reason for bringing zip up is that itatools does, however, contain a function called zip longest. This, instead of stopping when the shortest input is exhausted, continues to the length of the longest, filling in the default value value none. You can change this default value by assigning to the keyword argument fill value. Here I'm simply showing how easy it is to make a dictionary using zip. Like zip, enumerate isn't strictly speaking part of itatools, but it's a built-in function and it's a must know for iteration. It allows you to iterate over index value pairs of a sequence in a Pythonic way. In this example, instead of merely printing our colors, I want to show explicitly that red is the first, blue the second, and yellow the third. This is easily done with enumerate, although I'd rather that we didn't start at naught and started at one instead. That's easy to fix, we just pass in a start value. When applying enumerate to a sequence of tuples, be careful that you use parentheses and that you place them in the right place, as otherwise you'll probably get output that you neither intended nor wanted. The next two speak for themselves. Permutations takes a collection of items and outputs a sequence of tuples with the items rearranged into all the possible configurations. You can optionally choose to receive all permutations of a smaller length by passing in a second argument.
The result of combinations, on the other hand, is a subsequence of permutations. It's probably best understood by playing around with it. When choosing combinations, you have a pool of possible candidates, which are the items in the input iterable, and as each combination is produced, the chosen items are removed from that collection of possible candidates. Like I say, do play around with it to get a better feel for what it can do. I slice takes an iterable as the first argument, and then up to three further arguments. A start, a stop, and a step. Essentially, this produces an iterator that will return selected values from the input. With no arguments, the selection is the entire input. With a start value, the I slice is now from 50 to the end. With a stop value, 50 to 70, and just like a slice after which I slice is named, you can add a further argument and that will be the step value. Here we go from 50 to 70 in twos. T gives you n number of iterators from a single iterable. In this example, the list is unnecessary as range 10 is itself an iterable, but is there for ease of understanding. A pro tip coming up, I've run our code with the I flag, which will run your code, but then leave you in the interpreter afterwards, making it easy to inspect and hack on during development. X is a list of 10 integers, naught to nine. T by default will produce two iterators. You can pass a second argument in to make this as many as you like. You can advance one, and thus be left with two iterators in a state of dyssynchrony about the same data. I'll leave you with an example of how to use enumerate. If you need to brush up on the deck data type part of the collections module, then there's a link above now to an introduction and demonstration of its use, together with a very interesting demonstration of how it has speed benefits over list. In this code, the deck that we use has a maximum length of 10 by default, and we go through each line of the input file that we pass in. Here I've just passed in this very same code, and as you can see on line 24, if if we come across the string deck in any of the lines, then that line together with the 10 previous lines are printed to the terminal. That's the end of today's tutorial. Thank you once again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then do subscribe and like if you haven't done so already and pass the message on so that others can find this educational resource and benefit from it as well. As ever, I welcome feedback and your requests in the comments below.